I'm just befuddled, and it, like I say, it's kind of heartbreaking in the sense that the human element has been taken away, man. Our kids are missing out on something for that very reason. Sean, like Sean said, so you push a button and everything, boop, 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 <laughs> but you don't get that feeling, that sense of fulfillment and accomplishment and development that comes from, you know, mastering your instrument. But I think, I, I don't know if that's so much, on again, on the artist as, as, as it is on the industry. You know, when does... You know, these artists say, you know what, enough is enough, man, of you pushing me and driving me and you, and you, and you pushing me in the direction that you want me to go in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm the artist here. Yeah. But I, mean, I know it's going to have to be collective. Yeah. It's going to be, be a collective effort. I was telling the, the, the kids the other day about uh, young artists, uh, Alan Stone. Remember Alan Stone? White guy, little redhead kids. You got to talk about old school soul horse. Mm-hmm. That boy bad. But he won't sign a major deal. I mean, he may have just signed one. Now with, and now he's, but he refused for so long because of, I don't want them to control my music. Mm. So you've got those guys out there, but it's, it, they have to get to a point in their career and they say, well, what am I giving up? So I've either got a whole lot of level of success and I can afford to, to fight that label on what I put out, mm. or I'm satisfied with being pretty good in terms of sale. Got you. All right. It's rare. Like I said, uh, uh, one of those guys, Tech Nine, Chance the Rapper, those are those major selling independent artists who've done it for years on their own, but they have huge uh, fan support. Okay, and they so buy those albums every time. As I, as I listen to you guys talking about the importance of musicianship and having a message, uh, recently I was in D.C. at the new Museum of African American History and Culture. Yes, yes. And on the top floor, uh, there's a significant section dedicated to the history uh, of African American music, mm-hmm. and the, that theme of musicianship yes. and message yes. runs throughout across uh, genres. And then one of the things that's really exciting uh, there's a group of young people that perform down there from the Stacks Soul okay. Music Academy. Okay. All right. They have their own charter school there in Memphis, wow. where they're teaching musicianship, mm-hmm. they're teaching message, and one of the ways they teach musicianship is to have them learn those songs from the Stax label. Mm-hmm. See, and these kids turn it out. Yes. Because, again, I mean, they're going to rearticulate those messages yes. for their generation, yes. for yes. their time, right. but they're going to reach back right. to right. that as a foundation. Right. That's what right. you're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And this should always, as a keeper, of, I consider myself a keeper of the flame. Right. And as a keeper of the flame, I think there's, that's foundational. You have to, our music is rooted in that. And if we get too far out or it gets too watered down or change to that degree, and we, I'll give you an example. Everybody knows Kenny G, and everybody loves him, and plays him. you know, and they asked him about, well, who are your influences? You know, they talked about Coltrane, and Bird, and Sonny Rollins. You don't know who these guys are. How can you be a saxophone player? You're playing the stuff that they created, but you don't know who they are. You know that, and then when that progresses, when, some, when he's somebody's influence, and that guy's somebody's influence, who's somebody's influence, pretty soon you get something that doesn't even resemble what the music was. <laughs> right, exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. See, that's my fear. Right. That's my fear. Just like history getting changed. Right. Like uh, uh, Jerry Mulligan started the cool school of jazz when we know it was Miles. Mm. Stuff gets, uh, you know, <laughs> get cheap. Well, you know yourself, Doc. Mm-hmm. Gets, gets twisted, twisted in history. <laughs> right. That's my problem. That down the road now, uh, R and B, our the music we created, uh, uh, the, the 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 Motown sound and all that will be a hundred years from now. They'll be saying like, what? No, that what, what was that? That's, that's, that's a myth. Did yeah. that really exist? You know. Yeah. I mean, so somebody has to. Like these people, like you're talking about in Memphis, teach that music, mm-hmm. teach that foundation. And then, you know, our kids take it and run with it, man. But that, Do that, your thing. That history. So we're talking about, we're talking about Motown. And what did I tell you? Black Swan. Yes. Black Swan. You remember Black Swan records? I think I do, yes. Okay. And so we, we say historically, we only remember Motown was the first black on record label. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Black, oh, no. Black Swan was. Way back right, in way the back. 20s. Sure. All right. Right. And, and so that knowing where we came from. Precisely. And keeping that alive. So that's why I said I made my students go through uh, four lectures of the history of music. <laughs> like, when are we going to learn about yes. the 360 deal? We yes. got to the 360 deal. I'm going to teach you why you have a 360 deal. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. now this makes sense. Now, when I'm done, it's, man, that was really insightful. That was enjoyable. I loved it. But we had to make them. Yes. You had to make them go back. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, impor- it's important that we do that. And that, it's important that's that we do not that. important it's to essential. our children. Matter of fact, it's essential that we do that. It's not important to our children. And I say it, simple, I say it simply like this. There's a song that the, uh, one of these rap, uh, one of these artists would sample. One of our older songs. James, oh, James Brown, Brown somebody. Time, James Brown you know, they sample them, and our kids think it's new. Oh, they think oh, it's brand new. They think brand it's brand new. new. Yeah. And then you I say, well, no, that was uh, James Brown, <laughs> baby. No, it ain't. 
That's all. Such, such. Yeah. I was saying about James Brown. You going to sing it like, how do you know that song? I was saying, that song is 30 years old. I was Your grandmama know that song. I was saying about James Brown. That's a fact. That song is 30 years old. I was talking to somebody. We were talking about a Stevie Wonder song. They said, well, why did Stevie Wonder take that song from Cooley? Right. See, that's what I mean. My kids need to know. They need to understand the genesis and the progression here. Took this up from Cooley, huh? That's it. Hey, before Sean takes us out of here, uh, I've got to ask you all, you know, and I know this is the impossible question, but if you got that one artist, that one song, wow. when you want to reach back for something. Wow. And mm. I know it all depends on, on, on the mood. Yeah. <laughs> but so we just talked that who or what that might that be. So now we're talking any kind of me just vote anything. Any. Mm. Wow. Particularly think for, about what you said about for, you, you, uh, musicians. Again, I'm a, I'm 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 an old soul and I'm I'm yeah. I'm Primarily, first and foremost, yeah, I, I guess a jazz aficionado. Right. So, for me, it would probably be um, it certainly would be Charlie Parker, Big Bird uh, playing uh, some ballad, probably um, a version of one of the outtakes actually of Parker's mood. I found that some of the outtakes, man, far exceed <laughs> what they uh, what they put out, what they distributed. You know, probably it probably would have been for me, yeah. Charlie Parker, Charlie mm -hmm. Parker definitely. I said, I'm not that old. <laughs> so, oh, I'm not that so old. I'm not that old. I still reach back. <laughs> okay. I'm older than you. And yeah. that's the thing. And I so, I listen, back, so, like I said, I'm not, like I said, I don't play an instrument, so I, okay. but I'm, I sing, so I'm a vocalist. So, for me, and especially in terms of, of me really kind of discovering music, mm -hmm. it was, was, was early 90s, late 80s. Mm -hmm. wow. So, in terms of uh, a, a vocalist group, I'm a big boys to man fan. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. And those are guys that, 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 harmonies. that they, they, those harmonies, oh, right? Man. And yeah. those are guys that, that, that pride themselves on their musicianship. Right. Yes. Yes. So for me, that, that as a group, that's that's probably it. Wow. So for me, um, you guys probably uh, laugh, but um, I think um, Anita Baker, man. Right. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, no. You know, no. Uh, one of the, Anita, uh, Anita her song, uh, um, I had it on the tip of my tongue, man, but I lost it. But Anita Baker, um, it does something to me, man. We talk about, you know, if I hear it in passing or whatever, it's. You know, Anita's nothing to sneeze at. She's sweet a great. Love, sweet. That was the name of the one. That's the one. There you go, Dolly. She just sneezed it. That's the one. That was it, Dolly. That's it, right there. That's it, right there, Dolly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She left it on the stage. She left it on stage on that one. She's a great song stylist, too. She's an example of a great stylist, you know. Not yeah. the greatest voice, but she doesn't need to have. Right. Because yeah. she, she has a unique style. And she had yeah. a nice little hairstyle, too. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen to y'all brothers talk. I was sitting there, I said, man, I got about three or four in my, in my head. But I said, I said one. So, you know, one that I, I always go to uh, has got to be Frankie Beverly. Wow. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, wow. When, yeah. I, when I talk to young people about it in right. class, you know, we talk about the tensions in relationships. Yes. And I said, you know, you all know relationships. You're at college. You get this. And I said, you know, one of the best songs I've ever heard talk about the tension in relationships. Joy and pain. Joy and pain. They look at me like, what? Huh? Sunshine, what? sunshine and rain. Yes, sir. What? Man. So then you have to break that down to them. I mean, I was like, if that doesn't help you And then the listeners here, they're going to go, complexity of relationships. And then they're like, wait a minute, Rob Bass singing this song. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I'm telling you. That's right. Oh, man. Well, all right. that glass shot. Why don't you take us on out? So, wow. We thank you guys for joining us here today at the Barbershop Talk. Uh, we thank Brad for... Um, for allowing us to be here at uh, Brad's Barbershop in New Brighton, PA. I thank Mr. Lispert for joining us, our resident uh, musician, expert, Doc. We thank you always, sir. We thank you, Doc Cedric Lewis, and myself, Sean. Um, enjoy yourself, um, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Barbershop Talk.